Today on the Wayne Train we pick up off the back of our first loss in the Premier League season and yesterday's episode we're going to take on Liverpool, hopefully get back on track at Ashton Gate before we take on Leicester in the fourth round of the Carabao Cup, hopefully this season we can get on a little bit of a cup run. Welcome to episode number 23 of the Wayne Train here on Sean Does FM with Plymouth Bargall. I hope you're doing well and coming today. We've got those two games, Liverpool in the Premier League and then Leicester City for the first time back in the Premier League in the save in the Carabao Cup. So if you're looking forward to that, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video. And if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel, also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well. It is greatly appreciated, but off the back, of yesterday's episode, we're picking up pretty much right where we left off off the back of that slightly weird but goal-heavy loss at Brighton. And before then, we did beat Chelsea prior to transfer deadline day. So if you missed that episode and want to catch up, I'll leave a link to it over in the top right corner. Very little has happened off the back of that. Obviously, we've just gone forward one week before we do take on top of the table Liverpool. Unfortunately, these days, Brentford have gone above us, but they have played an extra game. But before then, this was looking like it was going to be a top of the table clash. Still missing Reese Williams. Liverpool, though, look like they've got a few injuries. Joe Gomez, for some reason, unregistered for the Premier League, which is interesting. But also Diogo Jota and Endo are out, so they might be a little bit weaker than they usually would be for this game. But still, no doubt, with a pretty strong team under Jurgen Klopp about the only thing that's changed, as you might expect, off the bag of our first defeat of the season, the dynamics did go down a little bit. Callum Wright, he wants a new deal here, and to be fair, not too sure if we should give him one. One, this contract goes through to 2028, and also these days, usually, when all our players are fit, he wouldn't even make his way onto the bench. So I'm not too sure if giving Callum Wright a new contract here is a good idea, but unfortunately, the thing that usually works on this year's game saying that we can't afford it, didn't work with him and to be fair off the back of that signing of Serginho Dest in yesterday's episode. Not too sure if we could afford it, but there's just still a little bit left over in the wage budget. But that's the only real thing that's changed off the back of yesterday's episode. And hopefully we can bounce back from that kind of weird loss to Brighton. Just some stuff there that happened in the match engine, which was a little bit funky. Hopefully not quite so much of that in this game. And if there is, it's in our favour. We're going for the same thing that we went for in that second game against Brighton. In yesterday's episode, Sebastian Halsner will keep his spot at centre-back coming in for Reese Williams, despite the fact that both our centre-backs scored first half own goals in that loss to Brighton. That did just feel like that might have meant our centre-backs ended up performing a little bit worse off the back of that than they otherwise would have a bit harsh there. Now, the player ratings can influence performance, especially for own goals, which, to be fair, our players didn't have much chance to get out of the way from, but there you could see our team before, same as it was for that second game. Obviously, today's episode, there are Liverpool Coop Miners, an interesting new addition, but they are going with a 4 3 3 to be fair. Apart from that, it does look like a very similar team to the one in real life at the moment, and hopefully, we can pick up a decent result here back at home, maybe even just take a point off them and keep ourselves near the top end of the Premier League table. The goal for us this season, at least in terms of me, is to try and get Plymouth into a European competition for next season, especially considering last season we were the only team who finished inside the top 10 of the Premier League, who have not got European football this season because of weird stuff happening with teams qualifying through winning other competitions. Now, an early concern here, Ben Wayne has picked up an orange injury. We'll try and get him through to half time, but that would not be ideal. He's been dealing with injury so far this season. Hopefully, that's not a serious one. And so I'm on a yellow card there, actually, with a good tackle first highlight. Luis Diaz tries to put that one top right corner. Thankfully, Luis Jr., comes up with a good save the Brazilian to keep the Colombian out, unlike what happened on international duty. And off the back of that, a free kick down the other end. Whitaker tries to get his heel on the end of that, but it might have hit Coop Miner's hand, and it might actually be a chance here for the Wayne train to score a goal against Liverpool yet again. I'm pretty sure he scored in this fixture last year, of course. We bet them 6-1 at home park last year, albeit that was back with the 4-2-3-1. But Wayno goes straight down the middle. He sends Alisson Becker left. And he'll pick up goals despite the fact he's on an orange injury. So Wayne, no, thankfully we did leave him on because he puts that one away and makes it 1-0 to Plymouth Fargo. And hopefully this is a goal that might get us on our way to potentially picking up three points here against the league leaders. But up until that point, we'd done absolutely nothing in that game. 
Liverpool can feel a little bit harsh off the back of that. They do have a throw in in a dangerous area. Alexander Arnold for Mo Salah will rip that one bottom left corner. Unfortunately, our lead doesn't last long. Mo Salah off a good throw in routine there from Liverpool and a Trent assist makes it one all. This could be another interesting game off the back of that Brighton one. In today's episode, Slobberzai picks out Alexander Arnold, Mo Salah one touch and just rockets that one around Gutierrez. Nothing Luis Jr. can do that time. One all coming up to half time here in this big, close to top of the table clash in the Premier League. A couple of subs here. We might make it half time now, especially because Gutierrez has picked up a yellow card on a 6.3, the same rating as Simon. Also, Wayno, despite the fact he did score that goal, that orange injury, hopefully not too serious. I think we'll bring Pizarro on for him at half time. But to be fair, not doing too badly in this game. Obviously helped out by the penalty, but one all the result that I would take. So Pizarro is coming on for Wayne. Hopefully that injury, as I said, not too serious. And also Randall will come on for Som and Serginho Des can come on out left just like he did in that first game he played in yesterday's episode. Did kind of help turn things around, it felt like, against Brighton. So, so far, a decent impact from him. Hopefully he can do the same again here coming on for Miguel Gutierrez. But we'll try and get the guys fired up here a little bit for this second half and hopefully grab something from this game at the moment, a one or draw, I think I'd take it, if we could kick on and pick up three points like we did against Chelsea, that would be a very good bounce back from that 5-3 defeat that we did suffer against Brighton so far, very good in terms of goal scoring in the Premier League, kind of like we were last season with the 4-2-3-1, but still, our defence hasn't been that great, or at least it was actually going quite good until those five goals that we did concede, good chance there for Alexander-Arnold to make it 2-1, but Luis Jr. there actually Comes up with a good save for that one. Might have come off the woodwork, but it's now a chance here for Liverpool from a corner. Robertson puts this one far post, but thankfully our Brazilian goalkeeper comes out to claim it. Battle of the Brazilians here. Luis Jr. might not be too far away from an international call-up, which would be interesting. Brazil have some very good goalkeepers, obviously with the likes of Edison as well. But now at the hour mark, and we are just going to see here if we can get Pizarro to ease off tackles, but of course he is on a pressing forward. So because of that, we can't do that. And so I think we'll just continue here off the back of checking on that. In fact, as we try and do that, there is a highlight that does start, as is often the case on FM24, but this time we're in position. So hopefully this might be a highlight in our favour. Hausner up to Randall, and now Pizarro on that yellow card. Tries to put that one top left corner. It did beat Alisson, but unfortunately also bet the crossbar. Still one all, but to be fair, we are creating some good chances, at least we have in the second half. But so far, Liverpool definitely the team on the front foot. Now, a couple of players on red hearts. We're going to bring on Lewis Gibson or Kane Kiesler. Hayden Sebastian Hausner can go out to right back for the last little bit of this game. And also, we're going to take off here. Nicola Elliott just struggling a little bit more than a red-hearted Whitaker. Andrew Johnson can come on for him, hopefully being a bit tall in the air. That might just give us a bit more threat from set pieces and also we might be able to float the ball into the box and with 10 minutes left and still locked up at one all I think that's something that we are going to do and hopefully it might just help us try and grab a winner here at Ashton Gate so far we have won all of our home games this season despite the fact we're no longer playing at home park while that does get renovated but doing a decent job here to keep this at one all albeit about to make our way into four minutes of added time there is a highlight unfortunately it's a really poor pass and it's a chance now for Liverpool to get on the attack. Salah somehow finds McAllister with that header back. It goes back now to Canate, and they start to make their way into our half, which is a little bit concerning. Good Johnson tries to put some decent pressure on. They go back to Alisson. Now Robertson back in there for Trent. Pings one out there to Mo Salah, the goal scorer, on a yellow card. Plays that back to Alexander Arnold. Liverpool here with a good sustained period on the ball. McAllister with a shot which takes a wicked deflection. It falls to Darwizzi Nunez in a ton of space. He puts it away. And I think we're suffering back-to-back -back defeats here in the Premier League. And that is a very harsh goal to make it. So yet again, stats-wise, Liverpool probably deserve to win this. But that ball has fallen oh so kindly to Darwin. Nunez off the back of that. Can't change anything until this highlight finishes. But it's going to be time for us to try and go ultra-attacking to try and get something out of this game. In the remainder of injury time, but that is a really harsh goal to concede. To be fair, that doesn't happen as much on FM24. It used to be some of those deflections did just look a little bit dodgy, but that one, just the right place, right time there 
for Darwin Nunes, as can be the case in real life. And that is the goal that means we do suffer a 2-1 defeat. To be fair, our only goal did come from the penalty spot, the Wayne train, but still, that is not ideal, albeit Liverpool. I think we can handle losing to them but off the back of that Brighton game. I was hoping we might just be able to get something out of this game. So it's back-to-back -back defeats in the Premier League. That does now put a little bit of pressure on that list of games. Hopefully, we can get back on track there before we get back stuck into the Premier League against some teams that hopefully we can be beating in Aston Villa and also the only team predicted to finish below us on the table this season and it's Sunderland under Ange Postacoglu's management, but unfortunately it's a 2-1 defeat there to Liverpool at Ashton Gate. And before we go forward a few days to take on Leicester, in the fourth round of the Carabao Cup, there you can see the post-match article. Now it's time to check in on that potential injury to Ben Wayne. Oh dear, it's a significant one, so unfortunately not much Wayne train action for this episode, and also might be missing for a couple off the back of this, unfortunately, just been a little bit injury prone so far this season. The Wayne train out with a calf strain for four to five weeks. That's now two first teamers that we are missing in the train. And also Reese Williams, who to be fair, could have helped there against his former team in Liverpool. But that does now test our striker depth just a little bit for the next couple of weeks. Hopefully no more injuries up front. And we'll come back shortly and hopefully start to get on a little bit of a cup run and get past Leicester City. And coming back a few days off the back of that loss to Liverpool and also that injury to the Wayne train, we're going to take on Leicester here in the third round of the Carabao Cup, not the fourth round. Always get mixed up with this competition, seeing as we don't enter in the first round, but we did get past Bolton. That one away from home, obviously, to expect that with those guys being a couple of divisions below us. Now, with our injury concerns and also the fact there's quite a few players in our first team who are quite tired going into this game, we are going to put out a pretty heavy rotation here against the team who find themselves 11th on the Premier League table their first season back in the top flight since this save started. Of course, they are starting in the Championship these days in real life, which is a little bit interesting to say for a former Premier League champion of not too many years ago, but it's going to be interesting to see here what this Leicester City team does look like. And to be fair, we are still inside the top four, so you'd like to think this is a game that we can win, albeit, as I said, quite a bit of rotation going into the second game of today's episode, considering it is a cup competition. So hopefully these guys can do a similar job to what they did against Bolton. In terms of our usual first team players who are staying in this one, Sebastian Hausner has gone from central defender to ball playing defender. Just want to see if he might be better on that side as Lewis Gibson. He can come in or Jacob Graves and also Pizarro in that pressing forward role. Obviously not usually a first teamer, but with Ben Wayne being injured, he is now. And we don't really have anyone suitable to come in him. But apart from that, it's a full rotation and every other position. Very interested to see here how Serginho Desk gets on from starting the game. He's been pretty good so far since coming off the bench. And if he performs well at right back, because so far he hasn't actually played at right back, which is the position that I think he's a little bit more suited to than left back. That could make things interesting for someone like Kane Kessler Hayden, considering that he's just not quite as good a tribute wise. Serginho Desk, definitely an upgrade. Was hoping we could keep that nice good green link down that right-hand side, but I think at some point, Serginho Dest might be worth starting over Kane Kessler Hayden. Also, that might mean that Ethan Laird is a better bench option. So Kane Kessler Hayden, if Serginho Dest plays well in this game, might be in a little bit of trouble. So if he does start to play well, we might take him off early and try and save him up for our next game in the Prem, where we do take on Aston Villa. We'll get underway here at the King Power. So far, not much happening. In this one, hopefully, we can pick up a win over a team we had a decent record against in the championship from the year that we won it a couple of seasons ago and who are coming back up to the Premier League, albeit so far, they are doing a decent job. But first highlight is in our favour, Gibson, with a throw. Now, Serginho Des plays that one in to Tony Springett. Goes out there to Wilson S. Brandoloni from Manchester City. He bangs that one home to be here, another player who could find his way into the first team soon if Miguel Gutierrez continues to struggle just stay a little bit. Some poor passes from him in those last couple of games that we have lost. But thankfully, this pretty heavily rotated team has got us off to a good start. Not an angle I thought would score from there, but he beats Hermansel and puts that one away for his first goal as a Plymouth Argyle player. And we go 1-0 up early. And shortly off the back of that, it's another throw in here in our favour, albeit this time a bit further back. Thankfully, Pizarro does well to get that ball back for us. Now, good Johnson. Lovely ball across the face of goal. And Callum Wright will bang that one home. He's not too happy with the situation that the club currently 
wanting that new contract, but to be fair, he has been playing quite well when we have called on him, especially in these cup competitions, and also with the injury to Wayne Train, he'll probably find his way back onto the bench for Premier League games as well, but thankfully that defender just does not pick him up there inside the inner box, and he puts that one home and gives us a nice early 2-0 lead here at the King Power, and shortly off the back of that, he's another highlight here, hopefully, and our favour, he finds the Genio Dest, plays that one back into Randall, although really poor pass from him, and it's a chance now for Leicester to do something for the first time in this game, but thankfully Hulsner cuts that out, albeit hits it straight out to a Leicester City player, so they can continue on the attack, Sara. Now Pizarro with the ball, tries to rocket that one top left corner to be fair, did beat Mike Cooper, Wilson is brown there, with an interesting clearance to go and tidy things up, but thankfully it does the job, we are still 2-0 up, the shots are actually even in this game, but thankfully Leicester City, so far with none on target, just that one chance that did come off of the woodwork, but so far it's been a good start for us here away from home, albeit as I say that, another highlight there potentially in favour of the home team, but thankfully we win that ball down the left-hand side, and right plays that one back to Wilson Esbrand so far, having a very good game at left back, Halsner plays that one across to Serginio Dest, the other player we're keeping a bit of an eye on for future first team minutes in this game, and he starts to run his way in behind of the Leicester defence, nice ball there, far post the defence, gets absolutely bamboozled, and Andre Lucas Good Johnson will put that one away and make it 3-0 in the first half, and it looks like we're on our way through to the fourth round of the Carabao Cup, so thankfully doing a number here on a team that have just come up from the championship, and also with a pretty heavily rotated team as well, but not sure there what that centre-back's doing, that's a couple of times now that he's been caught out in this first half, and Good Johnson makes it 3-0, and it's fair to say things are going very well for us in this game, might even get a sighting of Liberato Kakache in the second half, if this does keep up, we'll get a New Zealander on the field, seeing as the Wayne Train can't, because he's injured, but that looks like it's going to be a very good first half 3-0 here at the King Power, things going extremely well for us, the XG in a good position, and finally, actually outscoring it, which is something that so far this season, we haven't done quite as much as I would like with this 4-2-4, and everyone out there is on a pretty good rating, so I think for now, we'll just leave things as they are, and might start to think about some changes around the hour mark, so we start to make our way now into the second half, albeit, as I say that, Tony Springett, he goes down to a red hard, so with that in mind, I think what I might do here, is give some game time to Facundo Farias, usually we want him to play at left wing, so we'll give him some game time there, and Callum Wright, can go out to the right wing, as his name would suggest, that's our first sub here in the second half, that one slightly injury enforced, but thankfully no symbol came up, but shortly after the back of that, we now have a corner, good Johnson does get his head on the end of that one, I'm expecting that a little bit from the tall Icelandic striker, but unfortunately that time can't hit the target, it is still 3-0, and now just making our way past the AR mark, and Serginho Dest is doing pretty well there on that 7.8, I think I might take him off here just to see what Ethan Legg can do at right back, and also because he might now get a run in the first team over Kane Kiesler Hayden. Also, Damien Pizarro is down to a red hard. With that in mind, what we might do here is bring on Morgan Whitaker. Farias can play pressing forward, seeing as he is quite versatile, and Callum Wright can go back to left wing. Whitaker at his natural right wing position. Shortly off the back of that now, it's Adam Randall, who's down to a red heart, but I think we'll save up that last sub for a little while longer, another corner here, Good Johnson gets his heel on the end of that one that time, goes a little bit closer, but unfortunately the woodwork denies us like it did to Leicester in the first half, and now it's a chance for them here to hit us right off the back of that, somehow don't win that ball there through Buckley, I think that was, and now it's a chance for Leicester there, they find Golosabal in a ton of space he picks up, his first goal of the season, not really too sure what the defending was there, not very good, and it's 3-1 now to us, but thankfully still feel like we've got enough of cushion here to hold on and go through to the next round. Someone comes out of line there, it's Buckley, so not too sure what our defenders are actually doing to leave Gorosabal in so much space, but he puts it away and makes it 3-1, and now we might make our last couple of subs. We'll bring on Simon Som for Adam Randall also, just because he needs some game time to hopefully make sure he can actually stay at the club when that ESC expires. Libby Kakache can come on for Wilson Esbrand, who has been doing a good job, albeit before those subs can go through. There is a highlight, which is a bit concerning, because these often lead to goals, as I've said a few times in this series, on FM24. We're trying to make our way 
out from the back. Buckley fought to Good Johnson, but runs straight into a wall of blue. And now Ducker, he gets in behind, takes on a shot from a tight angle. It's happened again. And Leicester City, they make it 3 2. And this is now starting to become a little bit of a concern. We'll stick with those substitutions. Hopefully, that might just sure us up in terms of fresh legs, but that is not ideal. Pitts and Ducker makes it a quick fire double. All Leicester City, 3 2. Hopefully, we can maybe get a goal off the back of that. Was just thinking about changing some tempo and stuff like that. But off the back of that, there's a highlight down the other end. Libby will find Som has a shot, but that's blocked. Libby there looking for an assist. Now it's actually a good chance for Leicester on the counter attack to level things up inside the space of only a few minutes. Tavernier with a long range shot, but thankfully a little bit too far out. And it goes well over the bar. Nothing that Mike Cooper did need to worry about. But now this game is well and truly on, especially as Leicester City have a thrown inside of the final third. They put that one into the mixer. Thankfully, Libby does head that one clear and Callum right with a good interception. Som plays that ball out nicely, actually. And good Johnson with a chance here to get us on a counter-attack. Plays that one back to Libby, thankfully. Just finds him. Now a chance for us here to calm things down and hopefully maybe grab a goal, which should surely put us beyond reach in this game, even though that should have been the case earlier. Morgan Whitaker will try and put this one away. It might have taken a deflection from a Leicester defender, but thankfully it beats Hermanson. Some bench impact there from our player of the season in both seasons so far of this save, and that makes it 4-2. And with eight minutes left, hopefully that's the goal to make sure we go through to the fourth round of the Carabao Cup. Does take a big deflection there. Otherwise, I think Hermanson might have saved that one, but thankfully we get a bit of luck and make it 4-2. And that should be all she wrote. Would have been very frustrating if we blew a 3-0 lead here at the King Power Stadium, albeit seven minutes of added time. And there is a highlight here. Hermanson lets that ball roll inside the box before playing it out to Connor Cody. Now, Luke Thomas, actually a player I was looking at as a possible left-back option, but good here is they look a bit better attribute-wise. And that ball falls very kindly to Tom Cannon. Unfortunately, Gibson there couldn't quite control it. And there's still six minutes of added time. This is still well and truly game on. Ducker there, funny touch. Quite fortunate to keep the ball. And then Gibson just trips over the ball. It falls to Cannon, and he makes it 4-3. Leicester City still well and truly in this game. So a bit concerning how we can see some late goals all of a sudden here at Plymouth Argyle and also in quite tight succession as well. It happened in that Brighton game in yesterday's episode, but thankfully this time we got enough goals to make sure we're going to pick up a win for free, but off the back of holding a 3 0 lead at half time. That was a little bit average in the second half, but thankfully we did get the job done, maybe taking off the players like Serginho Dest, not quite so good of an idea. Ethan Laird came on, only got a 6.3, but I think Serginho Dest now might be deserving of a little bit of a run at right back in the first team. Maybe Kane Kessler Hayden will make his way onto the bench off the back of that Ethan Laird performance, because that wasn't too great. But thankfully, we do pick up a win, albeit not quite as convincing as it looked like it might be. Definitely might need to work on some defensive stuff here with this tactic, as we've now conceded quite a few goals in our last couple of games, but thankfully back on track there. We make our way through the next round of the EFL Cup with a 4-3 win over Leicester. We'll come back shortly and see who we get in the next round. So thankfully we hold on there and pick up a 4-3 win over Leicester and only a few clicks on. We are going to take part here in the draw for the fourth round. Let's see who we do get in. It's not going to take long because we are the first name out of the hat. Lots of Premier League teams that we can face, but also a couple from the Championship in Hull City, Bournemouth, and Luton Town. If we could get one of them, that would be quite nice. Give ourselves a good chance to go through to the fifth round. But apart from that, still most of the big guns are alive in this competition, apart from Manchester United, because they got knocked out, as you might have seen before. And we do take on, I suppose you could call them, one of the big guns these days, managed by Roberto De Zerbi, of course. We will take on Tottenham Hotspur. That will be an interesting tie, of course. Man City and Liverpool. They get championship teams. Is the West Ham, to be fair. Don't mind that one quite so much. But we are taking on Tottenham in the fourth round of the EFL Cup. It does mean our game against Arsenal does get rescheduled. And that would be one I was thinking about coming back for in tomorrow's episode alongside a clash against Manchester City. So we'll just go check on our schedule. And yeah, that now looks like a pretty good double header 
for tomorrow's episode. We'll take on Man City away in the Premier League and then come back and hopefully go a bit further in the EFL Cup when we do take on Tottenham this time from Ashton Gate. But that will do it for today's episode. Unfortunately, lost to Liverpool and also the Wayne train picked up an injury which will keep him out for a little while but back on track in the EFL Cup with a 4-3 win which might mean some new players get some game time in our first choice 11 when we come back for tomorrow's episode and hopefully we can pick up some points in between now and then as well against teams just struggling a little bit in Aston Villa albeit they're in European football we don't want to sleep on them and also Sunderland at home surely that's a game we can win before we come back for those two games in tomorrow's episode but if you enjoyed today's one then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video, and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel, also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well until tomorrow for that double header in October against Man City and then Spurs in the Carabao Cup. Thank you very much for watching. Keep on keeping on, and I'll see you then. Cheers.